Hello everyone, and welcome back to my let's play of Rance Knight, the Helmanian Revolution. Last time, the Assault Squad has uh, resolved to move no north and pass through the uninhabitable frigid zone to enter Helman's uh, capital from a blind spot. This time we have a variety of events, which uh, I'm guessing infiltration is about uh, Patton, Crook and uh, I forget who was the third person that uh, got separated at the bridge. The fall of library is self-explanatory. But let us start with a nice refreshing battle at the calculator cube. Who gets a new weapon? Rance and Tilt were in the calculator cube. This is the calculator cube? What a curious place. Jeez. We are supposed to start crossing the frigid zone. Why did you think to bring me here? That's just how the calculator cube works. Don't question it. Huh, I see. Well, not that it matters. Dot dot dot. Our Spryer. Dot dot dot. Teal was by herself, with a muddled look on her face. The dream last night. What was it exactly? A yellow bird appeared out of nowhere and said, Your ultimate weapon is in the calculator cube. Come get it with your soulmate. That just ended, but... She did look at her pinky and faintly saw a red string. A red string only I can see. This has to be related. I wonder who it's tied to. She drilled in the red string to see where it ended. One of the outlaws, perhaps? Sarik? Or Lotorin? It could be Sir Hubert. <laughs> Let's see. Huh? Oh. Dot, dot, dot. The red string was tied to Renz. Oh, no! <laughs> Tilt shook her head repeatedly. That's all you're gonna say when you see me? Rude. I had a bit... I had a bad feeling this would be the case. But that doesn't make it any better. What are you even talking about? The red string on Tilt's... Uh, the red string on Tilt's pinky seemed to be tied to Rance's toe. No! What? Oh, well, um, I'm sorry, it's personal. What? Oh, by the way, have you ever heard of a place called the Calculator Cube? Calculator Cube? I know all about it, yeah. Huh? <laughs> Knew it! We are united by the red string of fate! Dot dot dot. Honestly, I don't hate Lord Runs himself. In fact, much about him is respectable. He has some heroic qualities, even. But that's purely when viewing under the lens as a warrior. As a man, he is a savage, uncouth brute. Ugh. Why does he have to be my soulmate? Or fall the rotten luck? Rub rub. Eek! Till jumped when Ren stroked her butt. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> you seem nervous about heading into the calculator cube. So I thought I'd calm your nerves. Jeez, this is the whole problem. Uh-huh, it's a weird place, but nothing to, he to fear. I've been inside plenty of times. Just think of it as a little bonus map, where you can get a useful weapon. <laughs> Fine, I understand. Huh? Wait a moment. What did you just say? You've been here plenty of times. Oh yeah, tons. Question mark? But you're only supposed to come here with your soulmate. Alright, let's go! I'm sorry, Tilt, but Rans has multiple. Now, we lose if we let three Game of Bears pass through or any allies are defeated. Fulfill the win condition, which is a mystery. Rans and Tilt will fight alone. The fight won't end until a special condition is met. Think about what the mysterious voice says at the start. If the character, either character going down is a game over, and letting three game of bears through counts as a loss as well. All right, we are taking runs and we are taking tilt. Okay, fair enough, I guess. Uh, let's go. Completion means one hundred percent. Take damage until together you reach completion. 
Okay, I guess we need to be uh, at 100% to of... Uh, what? Do we need to be together? Do we need to be like at half half each? Oh, that voice. It's a hint for how to finish the, this dungeon. Completion means 100%. Take damage until, together, you reach completion. What does that mean? Who knows? Maybe it means we should fuck. Absolutely not. If completion means 100%, perhaps we need to make it so the two of us add up to 100%. But 100% of what? Damage? Alright, let's go! Uh, please, I'm still thinking. Okay. Uh, let's bring the speeds down again. Okay, uh, you're not a game of bear, so I don't care about you. Tilt. Can eat shit. Okay, let's go with rents. These are hexi pillars. Are they all? He okay, some are, some are hexi pillars, some are blue ones. No. I guess let's just keep taking damage. Whatever that means. Honestly, I'm surprised you're my soulmate. Eh, just hearing the word soulmate is sickening. I'm a good man, I'll have you know. You'll be a happy lady. <laughs> Yay, I'm so glad. <sighs> Why me? Yeah, the heck with fate. I can just change it. Ah, uh, yeah. Good luck, Sealed. Good luck. Okay. Uh, Rans. Well, let's try to do something. And not be very successful about it. I guess the dangerous part is that both of them need to not die. Although, uh, I'm also not sure wh when the win condition triggers. Okay. Well, that that was easy. <laughs> that, that was definitely the easiest mission in the game. Cool. <coughs> oh, apparently we did it. Hey, Tilt, look. A treasure chest. So it seems. Is this my ultimate weapon? Well, open it and find out. Uh, very well done. Tilt opened the chest, despite feeling rather nervous about the whole thing. Oh my! This is a high-ranking short sword called the Munkwai. Ho ho! Looks like it's perfect for you. Mm. Tilt happily held the short sword against your chest. <laughs> Worth coming with me, right? Yes, thank you so much! I, Teal Chap, shall work even harder on my swordsmanship. On your swordsmanship? Swordsmanship. Huh? What is it, Lord Rans? Take that! Swoosh! Ah! Eek! Rans flipped up Teal's skirt. <laughs> no panties! No panties! Personally, I'd rather you work harder in the sex department. Man, you just don't wear panties at all anymore, do you? Teal, you dirty girl. Uh, this is related to events which are happening in Rance mode, which I am not showing in this let's play. Thwack. You're the one who ordered me not to. Ow! Could you cut that out already? Teal repeatedly jabbed her open hand into Rance's side. Back when I first met you, you acted a whole lot more reserved. Yes, well, I've since learned that there is no need to, for that around you, Lord Rance. Hmm, is that right? Jeez, Lord Rance. By the way, aren't you kinda wet? You little perv. Wake. Who do you think made me this way? Ow, I told you to stop that. I'm not even wet. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, we should probably head back now. Jeez. 
Where is he, of all people, my soulmate? I'll never accept this. Well, well, good luck, Tilt. Let's see what her new weapon is. Tilt... Well, okay, here is Tilt. Moonquai. Light as co... Light as cold as the moon dwells within the... the <coughs> <coughs> sorry. Light as cold as the moon dwells within the blade. All who the light pierces will meet the same gentle death. Nice. Well done. Let us proceed with infiltration. Patton, Peton, and Crook arrived at a remote village. Oh, right. Peton was the village person. I forgot. <sighs> Seems we lost them. Good work. How to believe we shook off all those troops. Even after they left the Great Northern Bridge, Helmanian soldiers continued to give chase until they finally got away moments earlier. We got lucky. So, what now? We, we meet up with the others, if possible. Trying to cross a, the bridge again would be suicide, I think. Probably. We are right by Lang Bao, though. Too bad there is nothing we can do by ourselves. Then, let's hide until the others get here. Problem is, where? Have any bright ideas? Hmm... Not much around here. There are some places in Langbao's castle town, but... That have a bigger search party there, here than there. Oh. That have a bigger search party there than here, I bet. Can't say that's a good idea. Then, let's try over there. Hmm... There? Good thing I always keep my uniform on hand. Dot dot dot. Well, well, well. What brings popular looks to my obscure church? The priest bowed deeply to Crook. I'm sorry to bother you. Wearing her Pope uniform, Crook bowed back. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. Stay as long as you wish, popular looks. Thank you. By the way, are these your Templars? They dress differently than I'd heard. Oh, uh, we are... We're not Templars, but we, are t but we were tasked with guarding her holiness. Y yeah, that. We are not suspicious. Sort of a lie, technically. Is that right? I see. Are you certain about staying in the warehouse in the basement, though? There are far nicer rooms up above. No, this is fine. Okay... Just then, they heard a knock on the first floor door. Oh, I believe I have visitors. One moment, please. Hmm. <laughs> Could those be Helmanian soldiers looking for us? Possibly. Excuse me, could you wait a moment? Yes? I can't explain the full situation, but if they happen to be looking for us, would you mind hiding our presence? Dot dot dot. Eh, maybe she shouldn't have asked. As you wish. Whatever the reason, the word of the God, uh, the word of the Pope is the word of God. If that is God's will, I cannot refuse. The priest bowed to a crook and headed to the entrance. Could think he's agreeable. Yes. Dot dot dot. Peter, what was up with you? The priest opened the door to find her many soldiers as they feared. Hello. What do you need? Are you the priest here? Yes. Yes, I am. We believe some abominable rebels fled to somewhere around here. We are currently searching for them. Rebels, you say? That sounds dreadful. Yes, one is a hulking martial <clears throat> one is a hulking martial artist. Another is a petite girl. Is there also a handsome man in gold armor? You've seen them? How much? Uh, what? I am asking how much you'll pay me for the information. What's the reward? You're a priest and you're demanding money. Prayer doesn't put food on the table. Tch. How's this? Who? Quite a hefty sum. Are these people important? None of your business. Now talk. All right. Well. Heh. <laughs> what? Oh well. You see. Hey, spit it out already. Why are you demanding more bribes? No, I'll talk. They are. Uh. They just passed by. Came in asking for a glass of water. They looked to be in a hurry, so I asked where they were heading, and they said they were on their way to Langpao. Knew it. They're going to the capital. Thanks for your cooperation, but try to be a little less crooked. Our god is a rough one. Men, let's head straight to the capital. 
The soldiers ran to the village gate. Dot dot dot. <laughs> How? How did you know I'd betray you? The priest turned around and saw Peter hiding in the shadows, pointing a sword at his back. Hmm. All criminals think the same. I didn't trust you from the start. And here I thought he looked like a good guy. What a piece of shit. Pat and, uh, and I are one thing, but you sold out your own Pope. You're going to hell eventually. But I can send you there early, if you'd like. W wait, listen to me. I don't want to live like this, but it's the only way I can survive. Oh yeah, and killing a priest means divine punishment. Y you wouldn't dare kill me. Using God to be beg for your life. W what? You're scared? <laughs> Even you villains can't murder a man of the cloth. Now let's do this. Pope powers, activate. I expel you from priesthood. <laughs> that is quite a lie. Now you're not a priest. Oh no! This is the word of God. Obey me, or you're expelled. Either way, you'll no longer be a priest. Gwee! I kinda pity him now. Hmm. Then what about this? We don't want whatever commotion comes from you suddenly losing your priesthood either. So all you have to do is lie to the soldiers and get us food. Uh, uh, food. It costs everything I have to just feed myself. If you're not willing to cooperate. I'm sorry, but you'll have to be silenced permanently. If you do, if you do work with us, I can brush this under the rug. I'll even let you stay a priest. Uh, the priest hung his head. I yes, your holiness. I'll gladly cooperate. All right, we agreed. No betraying us now, if you do. Pitten's sword gleamed. R right. <laughs> of course, I understand. The priest bowed repeat. The priest bowed repeatedly with a covertly smile on his face. These two do good work. Now, shall we make this church our base for the time being? What if more soldiers come? We have the priest to talk to them. I'll keep watch. I can call myself a nun for the time being. It's at least tangentially true. That seemed like the that seemed like a questionable use of your authority. Hope God isn't mad. Don't worry. God is relatively indifferent to anything outside her interests. Really? Good to know, I guess. What we need now is information. Let's talk to the villagers and get a good grasp on the situation before the others get here. Mm-hmm. Good idea. Who collect the info then? Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. You two stand out too much, so I'll do it. Sorry, I'm such a hulking martial artist. I could just take away. I could. I could just take off my armor, but a woman's less likely to draw suspicion. Right. Patton, Peton, and Crook found a hideout. Well, I'm glad the, these guys are doing okay. Let us see what is happening with the fall of Labyrinth. Labarie, the fortress city where the revolution started, was currently a battlefield. Smoke billowed from all over the <coughs> smoke billowed from all over, as the Second Army soldiers and the Revolutionary Army's knights clashed. Charge! Charge! Whoa! With over 100,000 troops and a, ja <coughs> and a Hugon squad that specialized in castle sieges, the Second Army's strength was overwhelming. Defend the city! Fight to the death! Whoa! Despite the dire circumstances, the revolutionary knights re refused to yield. Hunty helped to take down quite a number of Hugons, but it was only a matter of time until Labory fell. Dot dot dot. All according to plan, Lieutenant General Covert. Income Pope! What? I'm just buying time. <laughs> Reports say there were way more revolutionaries than this. There's a whole bunch of them riding off to Saturday 13 as we speak. Is that right? Hmm. If we head there right away, we might still have a chance to stop them. Then, shall we split up and form a pursuit squad? Nah, can't leave any potential problems here. Use all our forces to finish off these guys. Sucks that so many Hugons died, but we've just about got them. Hey, fellas, could you fight a little harder? No need to take prisoners. Kill them all. Slaughter every last one. Now accepting surrender, you hear? 
The word mercenary... <coughs> the word mercy is not in my dictionary. Show them what happens when you screw with the Saganami. Go! After them! The few revolutionary knights remaining met with Hunty in the meeting room. Even there, they could hear the roars, shouts, and fierce flames. Did they light a fire? Yeep! There is smoke! Looks like this is the end. Yes. We can't simply sit here and wait to die. We'll open the door and mount our last set. You can't! You've done, the, you've done your job of buying time. We only managed this long thanks to you. You've done plenty, Hunty. Go to the prince. You attended us to the end, and for that I have no way to thank you in words. See the prince to the capital at all costs. Dot dot dot. Sorry, everyone. I promise we'll make it to the capital. Give this message to the prince. Lead Hellman in the right direction. Definitely. Farewell. All the soldiers did the knight's salute. Hattie didn't know how to respond, so she simply gave them a light nod. Let's go, warriors! Our sacrifice shall see the prince to Langbao. Shout, shout, my friends! Show your pride as knights of Hellman! Okay. Dot dot dot. Potov's hands shattered as he watched the knight's emotional shouting. Hunty grabbed his hand. Huh? Focus your mind on how you want to survive. Nothing else. And focus hard. Hunty, what? Let's go. What? They teleported out of the room at about the same time the knights opened the door. Dot dot dot. Labarie fell to the Helmanian Second Army. <coughs> well then, let us go to the Twelfth Rita. The Hoverford floated through the frigid zone. The Altos were huddled together in the control room. Ooh, ooh. I knew it'd be cold, but not this cold. Alcanes, you're shivering too much. No, shivering heats your body up. Best to shiver more. When you can't even share any <coughs> when you can't even shiver anymore, then you're in serious trouble. A stove was in the middle of the control room. The burning stone inside glowed red hot and heated the place. Hey, it's freezing. Turn up the furnace. I can't. I can't. Freak responded a bit harshly. <coughs> in the event of some type of trouble, you never know how long we'll be stuck in the frigid zone. We have to keep the furnace going for as long as possible. Conserving energy is not my style. What if we just got a billion more of these rocks? That's an idea. Except that we want to keep the Halford as light as possible to cross the frigid zone quickly. This is the best balance we could strike. Uh, apologies for the inconvenience, but this is critically important. Try to tolerate it. Master Rans, let's do what he says. The frigid zone is a scary place. <laughs> this, is the per this is a perfect time to warn you. Listen, Hubert and I know the stone. Always do what we say. Why should I? If you don't want to die, just listen for once. Hmm. The Hoverford has progressed smoothly thus far. Hmm. It's minus 10 outside, or thereabouts. Well, that's tolerable. Like, Yeah, <coughs> it's pretty cold, but it's not like, ooh, deathly cold, no one can survive that. It's regular winter. <laughs> I'll tell you now, it's going to get far colder. You'd best be ready. Shut up and keep moving. Mm-hmm. Then, Whoa there. Pigo clung to San Himia. Toasty. Toasty. <laughs> Would you two like a blanket? Yes, please. <laughs> Messi gently placed a blanket over San Himia and Pigo. I'm feeling sleepy. It's a long way across the frigid zone. If you're tired, then sleep. Hmm... I hear falling asleep in the cold can kill you, though. That's when you're so close to death already that your mind goes hazy, not when you're just tired. As long as we keep the temperature in here up, you can sleep perfectly well. I don't sleep, so I'll keep driving to Howford. This iron body needs no rest. 
But everyone else should preserve their energy and get some sleep. Alright, don't mind if I do. Same. They huddled together and adjusted their blankets. We only just started the journey, so everyone's doing fine enough. <coughs> Hopefully the rest of the trip goes as well. Freak dimmed the lights in the control room. One person after another fell into a quiet sleep. Dot dot dot. Hmm. Hmm? Rance awakened in the darkness. Hmm. What? You're still awake? Oh, you woke up. What are you doing? Using magic to strengthen the stove a bit. Oh, now that you mention it, it's a little warmer than it earlier. <clears throat> wow, you can actually be thoughtful. Huh. Miracle scoffed at Rance's comment. In the off chance some of these people died, it would hinder my plans. Python Miss Naj and Peter and Chow are to, be, are to one day be part of my 12th Rita. What now? 12th Rita. I told you about them before. My personal warriors. Those who would be my sword and shield. I remember that. Think, think I was supposed to be part of it, right? Those guys are too? That reminds me that I haven't even told you, Chaos Master. Interested to hear more? Not really. <laughs> Very well. If you insist, Chaos Master, your sovereign shall oblige. I said I don't care. The twelve Rita will be the twelve elite warriors who answer directly to me. <laughs> they will be an old class cup. <clears throat> they will be an all-star cast of world-class knights. Miracle snapped her fingers and conjured up a hologram in the middle of the room. Look closely. Huh? What? The big line of men. Okay, so who do we have here? Uh, this is Piton, this is Torin Sanada, this is uh, Rolex, I don't remember his uh, first name. This is the king of Zeph. Uh, his name is uh, Ragnarok Ark the Super Gandhi. This is Rance. This is uh, a guy from uh, Nippon, whose name I don't remember, and I'm also pretty sure he's dead. This is uh, Oda Nobunaga, who is also dead. Uh, I don't remember who this is. Uh... His armor looks like he is from Zeth, but I'm not sure. This is obviously Patton, and I don't know who this guy is. And actually, I also don't know who these two guys are. They look like uh, they look really pale. So uh, are they demons? Uh, hard to say. Let's see. <coughs> oh, there is me back there. Never seen this place before, though. And obviously, this is Miracle Toll. Calm down. This is a hypothetical image of me and the Tsuvel Frita. It's kind of amazing that she just has a PowerPoint of her hypothetical super super nice quote that she carries at all times. Eh, nothing but men. Do they have to be men? Certain appearances must be maintained. Now, allow me to elaborate on each member. You really don't have to. The man closest to the front on the right is named Locke. I said you don't need to do that. This adventurer is famous for slaying the beast called Curse A. His combat talent is mediocre, but what draws my attention to him is his courage. He might be a reference to some uh, Ellison game that I don't know. However, he once lost a fight to a friend, and nobody's seen or heard of him since. No matter, I'll find him at some point. Are you familiar with this man, Chaos Master? Hmm. <laughs> nope. No? No? Oh well. His, his 12th reader name is Providence. Looks too dopey. You're really including this guy? Hmm. <laughs> You simply don't understand his merits. Allow me to introduce you to the next one, the man on the bottom left. Sparkles? Well, I suppose he needs no introduction. My rancher's guardian deity. Flawless and handsome, 
above average in all areas with nothing to criticize. His 12th written name is Perfect Gold. He's gay, drop him. Oh, is he now? I don't see the problem. I appreciate some diversity. Oh my, we are that advanced in our superhero squad. Next is the man second from the front on the right, head of Nippon's Oda clan, Nobunaga Oda. His laid-back attitude has gained him the love of his people. <laughs> he seems like a difficult man to predict. I appreciate that. His 12th written name is Thousand Strikes. Have you ever met him? No, I've only heard stories. I've yet to meet about half of the 12th Rita. Well, he's dead. What? <laughs> Very well. I shall consider a different member then. Next. Torin Sanada, once the tactician for the Takeda clan and Nippon's strongest army. He is clear-headed decision-making, plentiful knowledge and sharp insights would likely make him the brains of the 12th Rita. His 12th Rita name is Forest Dragoon. Too old. Drop him. Consider the overall balance. They need to be older members as well. Next. Patton Misnarch, heir to the Helmanian throne until it was stolen from him. Blessed with immense stature and powerful broadening techniques, he could act as both a passionate morale booster and a unifying leader when the situation calls for it. His Wilfrida name is Steelheart. <coughs> Too macho. Drop him. That's what makes him stand out. You could bear be to be at least sh <coughs> you could bear to be less shallow. Ragnarok Ark Super Gandhi, the ruler of Zeth, whose habit of freely wandering the world causes trouble for his country. His balance of powerful magic and physical capabilities is interesting, but his most unique feature may be his pleasantly unfettered personality. His twelfth written name is King Justice. Also to Macho, you know the rest. Then you know my response. Son Hojo. It's this guy. This young genius took over the Hojo clan at the ripe young age of 20. He excels at Nippon's unique Onmyoji te <coughs> techniques. Bringing his expertise to fights on the continent may have an interesting result. His 12th written name is Best Answer. He's a virgin. Drop him. A, a virgin? Why not? It could give him a uniquely twisted personality. <laughs> what? <laughs> Rolex Gadras, Hellman's fan slaying ogre, and their most powerful swordsman. You know his dual wielding prowess well. I expect he would lead the charge in group battles. His 12th written name is Twin Sword Ogre. Just being around that drunk is annoying. Buy him. Goodness, you're selfish. Okay, so uh, this this is supposed to be Arius. Uh, I have seen him in Kichiko runs where he has a brief appearance, and uh, I don't think he appeared in any other canon game. Uh, Arius is basically supposed to be the really classical hero character, like the main character of Dragon Quest, or maybe even like yeah, basically like the hero of Dragon Quest. Uh, and the joke is that uh, because he is spending all his time doing side quests, he never got to be in any of the games. <coughs> Arius Theoman, the forgotten hero. A man whose time, whose time tragically ran out before he proved his worth. <laughs> Isn't he interesting? Not so much for his abilities as for his story. I hear he has many fascinating stories to tell. His 12th Rita name is Judgmenta. Fuck him. You are not giving. You are not even giving me reasons at this point. Very well. Next. Marishitan. An assassin who led the Marishitan assassins. He is an exceedingly cold and quiet man who specializes in taking lives with his single age katana. <laughs> he even nearly killed me once. That was a fright. He looks plain at first glance, but I would actually call that a positive. Being forgettable could be to your benefit as an assassin. His 12th written name is Unchained Shadow. 
I've never met a decent guy with no eyebrows. Better not include him. The lack of eyebrows is unique, in my opinion. Next, Aizel, a fiend skilled in swordsmanship and hypnosis. He is also considered the most dashing fiend. Being a fiend makes him largely impo immortal, and his hypnosis could be used to control foes. <laughs> he should be able to take care of a plethora of interesting tasks. His twelfth written name is Prism Darkness. I think I recognize him too. Oh, now I remember. This is one of the fiends I killed. Uh, based on games that had fiends and uh, based on the ones I remember, I guess he was in Rans 3, maybe? But it was in the PC-98 art style, so I absolutely do, do not recognize this guy. If he is who I think he is, uh, he had a crush on uh, Shizuka, saved her life, and that got, then got killed by rats. That would, be, <coughs> that would be my guess for who he is. What? <laughs> we fought a 100% fair duel, and I totally destroyed him. It was not a 100% fair duel. Hmm, I couldn't have guessed Chaos Master already fought Prism Darkness. Never mind then, I'll consider a different member. And last, but so not, certainly not least, there is you, Chaos Master. Together, they are the Twelfth Rita. There's me, who will one day rule the world, and you, the Twelve Loyal Knights in my service. Dot dot dot. Well, that is certainly impressive. <laughs> if I followed your advice, there'd be nobody left. How amusing. <laughs> do you want me to keep me do you want to keep me to yourself? Is that a twisted, childish way of showing your devotion, perhaps? Cute. Are you stupid? As a sovereign, I am even handed and benevolent. To try and hold all my generosity is rather impudent. Anyway, why old men? Grandmother's advice. If I wish to rule the world, it's important to consider how I appear to the public. One woman dominating twelve powerful men. It makes my own superiority stand out that much more, doesn't it? If I am being honest, there are plenty of interesting women that I wish I could include. Such as Leah Paraparaliesis. Keikoku, Silbaro. Uh, Leah Parapara Lasers is the uh, current queen of Lasers and the character from Rance 1. I don't remember who Keikoku is. And uh, Silbaro is a, a woman from uh, Rance 4.1, the Let's Play for which is available on my channel. And she also appears in a previous game, Rance Quest where she is uh, sealed away by Crook for being uh, too ugly and being an existential threat to humanity. <laughs> Even among men, I'd like to add Hubert Lipton if I could. Well, you have two open spots. Why Red Stash? You have an, an unfortunate habit of underrating men. Much as I'd like to include him, other members already cover red hair, large stature and swordsmanship. If only he had something else that stood out. He is strong, so why not that? Sheer strength is important, but I value other attributes more. Now that you mention it, Rick's not in there. He seems like a perfect fit. Nothing about him is interesting. He is a gentle and timid man. All he has going for him is strength. Severely uninteresting. Worst of all, He's too weak in this area. Miracle touched your chest. It is? Heart. Well, that abnormal strength is appealing in its own way. I've thought about letting him guard my kingdom's gate. Maybe if he at least had four arms or something, I would give him something of a better role. Does anyone, does anyone have four arms? Of course, the world is a big place. The world is fascinating. I've met any number of people I could never have imagined. I'll gather together these people to stand up against the world, then make it grovel at my feet. Well, just imagining it must exhilarate you. Huh. Be mine, Chaos Master. 
I'll save a special seat for you right by my side. The view from there will be the grandest in the world. Who would agree to that? Ridiculous. <laughs> Adorable. Is, is he unaware or uninterested? This man has the potential to rule the world. Nobody could be more fitting as my right hand man. I may be mistaken, however. He could just as well end up leading a band of thieves as leading humanity. It's hard to get rid of on him. Yay, this is the Kichiko Rans reference, because in Kichiko Rans, Rans starts out leading a band of thieves. <laughs> Actually, let's see. Alright, I'll let you be one of my 12 women. What a lazy and thoughtless name. It'll be my specially selected harem of girls who are madly in love with me. <laughs> Just you wait. You would dare delegate to me to be a member of a group of 12. How insolent. Well, you delegated him to being a mere member of a group of 12. It is you who will be one of my 12, Rita. Nope, you're gonna be one of my 12 women. No, you. No, you. 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 Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Neither of us is budging. God, you're stubborn. <laughs> How very amusing. No, it's not. Somebody else overheard their, their conversation against her will. Dot, dot, dot. God, nobody cares. Can you two be quiet? The Howford's night dragged on. Well, that was very amusing. But this will be the end of today's episode. Next time, I guess we'll wrap up chapter 13. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Goodbye.